Coming up on today's show, Audi reveals specs for its upcoming e-tron Quattro SUV. Tesla shuts down its Fremont and Gigafactory production facilities to yet again address factory bottlenecks in Model 3 production, and why your Tesla Model 3 wants to watch your every move in the interests of science. These stories and more coming next. Hi there, folks. Yes, I didn't make it to China. A long story. There's a video linked below explaining it all. And I've got a very croaky voice today due to it being that time of year when allergies take over my body. So the first means you get a show today and the second means I'm going to have some extra vocal fry. Sorry. We're starting today's show with a sneak peek posted by Volvo's performance brand Polestar of its all-electric Polestar 1 undergoing extreme winter testing. Super sleek and packed with all of the usual Volvo safety tech, the first plug-in to wear the Polestar badge promises a total of 600 horsepower and 737 pound-feet of torque, or 1,000 newton meters if you prefer, thanks to its powerful plug-in hybrid drivetrain. And while it is a plug-in hybrid drivetrain, a fact that will put some of you off, it's promised all-electric range of 150 kilometers, that's 93 miles, on the NEDC test cycle makes it certainly more capable than most plug-in hybrids out there. Granted, NEDC test cycle results are super optimistic, so take about 85% of those figures for real-world range, but with the Polestar 1 due to be officially unveiled in Beijing this weekend, and both the Polestar 2 and Polestar 3 promising to be all-electric, it's certainly something you should know about. While we're on the subject of teasing, Audi released some new figures this week for its upcoming e-tron Quattro SUV. And while it's 400 kilometer, 248 mile range on the WLTP test cycle is a little less than some had hoped, the e-tron Quattro certainly hasn't disappointed in terms of battery and charging specs. Aside from the 95 kilowatt hour battery pack, Audi has confirmed that the e-tron Quattro will charge at power rates of up to 150 kilowatts when paired with next generation CCS quick charge stations. And in Europe, it will come with a standard onboard charger capable of operating at up to 11 kilowatts from a domestic three-phase charging station, or 22 kilowatts if paired with an optional second charger. And if that sounds like Tesla, that's because the e-tron Quattro is matching Tesla's European charging specs stride for stride. What's more, Audi says its cars will use an automatic authorization and billing system for new charging stations, meaning a very Tesla-like charging experience. Importantly, too, the new next-generation charging stations won't be something you'll have to wait around for if you decide to get a 2019 Audi e-tron Quattro. That's because Ionity, the new European-wide charging network founded by a collaboration between BMW, Daimler, Ford and Volkswagen, is charged, no pun intended, with getting European charging infrastructure ready for the next generation of faster charging EVs, and it's already begun installations across Europe. The first of these has just opened in Germany along the A61 motorway, and until the end of May, anyone who wants to refuel their CCS-equipped car will be able to do so absolutely free. And although this is currently only a Europe-wide network, similar schemes elsewhere in the world mean that even if you're not in Europe, you should see these next-generation rapid-charging stations come to your neck of the woods very soon. Porsche's all-new 2019 Mission E may still be some time from officially launching around the world, but this week, Porsche opened the order books in Iviki, Norway, offering fans the chance to reserve their own Mission E for 20,000 krona. That's about two and a half thousand US dollars. Early reservations for new electric models isn't exactly a new thing in Norway. Indeed, Mercedes, Audi, and Jaguar all offer the same pre-launch reservation process in an attempt to beat each other to customers, as well as trying to steal some of Tesla's well-established customer base. While it's not clear if Porsche will offer similar setup in other countries, pre-reserving your electric car isn't exactly an unusual concept worldwide either. After all, Nissan, GM, and BMW have all offered it in the past, and of course, Tesla still does it today. Following last week's disclosure that Tesla Model 3 production was just a little too automated and could use some more humans to help speed production up, Tesla announced at the start of this week that it would temporarily be halting production at both the Fremont production facility and Tesla Gigafactory in order to revamp production lines. The reason? To better streamline Tesla's manufacturing process, removing bottlenecks and making higher volume production possible. The modifications were scheduled to only take a few days and therefore production should already be back in full swing or will be soon. 
Interestingly, though, Tesla has also announced its intent to open a third shift at Fremont in order to produce cars 24 hours a day. Sending an email to employees, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that another factory closure was due in late May, after which he hoped that Tesla would be able to reach a production volume of 6,000 vehicles per week, allowing it to catch up with the production backlog that's built up thus far. Electrify America, the organization set up by Volkswagen as part of its penance for the Dieselgate debacle, has officially announced a new partnership this week with Walmart, which will see it install more than 100 ultra-fast charging stations at Walmart stores across 34 US states. This news comes on the heels of the news that Electrify America has secured deals with ABB, BTC Power, eFreak and Signet for the actual hardware that will be used at various Electrify America sites. Each unit will feature a 50 kilowatt demo connector, as well as one or more high power CCS connectors, capable of delivering up to 150 or 350 kilowatts of power, depending on the model. The first units will go live later this year, so if you see one on your travels, let me know. Staying with EV infrastructure a little longer, Porsche also announced this week that it would be installing 500 super fast CCS stations across the US before the end of next year readying its own charger network ahead of the US launch of the Mission E electric sedan. These stations, up to 350 kilowatts in power, will form the backbone of Porsche's own charging network. But Porsche has also said that unlike Tesla, it will allow other makes and models of cars to use its network. There will be a fee involved for charging there, and that includes Porsche owners too, but the exact prices haven't been released yet. When they are released, I'll make sure you know. Last weekend, Nissan officially launched its 2018-2019 Formula E race car at a special event in Los Angeles, where Nissan executives and Nissan EV brand ambassador Margot Robbie explained how keen Nissan was to be taking part in the important single-seat race series. Like so many other automakers, Nissan hopes participating in Formula E will help it not only refine its technology for production vehicles, but also serve as something of a halo brand for the car, capturing the imagination of fans and turning them into customers. In the electric vehicle world, we are acutely aware that electric cars are only as clean as the generation method used to produce the electricity that they rely on to operate. And that often leads to the claim that EVs are less clean than diesel cars if all of the electricity used to operate them comes from the burning of coal. Except coal is generally on the decline in the electricity generating world, and in the UK this week, it wasn't even used for 55 hours straight. Yes, that's right. For 55 hours this week, not a single piece of coal was used to produce electricity in the UK. And while some of the power generation mix at the time did come from fossil fuels, more than half of the electricity generated for the UK national grid came from renewable sources of electricity. This record time without coal beats the 40-hour record set late last year and shows that the UK grid is just getting cleaner and cleaner. Well done to my home country. Nearly three years after it was discovered that Volkswagen and its associated companies were building diesel engine vehicles designed to circumvent emissions control regulations around the world, another executive has been arrested and charged for their misdeeds. Previously, we've seen Volkswagen engineers face time, but on Friday morning, it was announced that Jörg Kerner, head of Porsche's powertrain development, has been arrested without bail due to him being a flight risk. Aside from being in charge of Porsche's engine development, Kerner is also considered a confidant of former Volkswagen CEO Matthias Müller, who stepped down last week as CEO of Volkswagen and was also Porsche CEO at the time of the Dieselgate scandal. The plot thickens. The Boring Company, Elon Musk's tunnel boring company that wants to revolutionize city transportation systems, has announced that it's raised 112.5 million US dollars from a group of investors, a figure that will certainly help it continue with its various tunnel building projects across the US. Perhaps more importantly, though, comes the news that the LA City Council Public Works Committee has unanimously approved a motion to exempt the Boring Company's first test tunnel from environmental review. This means that the proposed 2.7 mile extension to the existing test tunnel the Boring Company is building is one step closer to becoming reality. I'm sure if you're a Tesla owner that you know Tesla regularly collects data from your car, both relating to your car's overall health, but also data on the trips you make in your car. The latter, of course, is to help Tesla refine its semi-autonomous autopilot system, using the millions of miles Tesla customers drive every year as the ultimate teaching tool for the machine learning system that Autopilot uses to get better. 
Well, this week Tesla's gone one step further, asking Model 3 owners if it can start collecting video data from the various cameras located on Model 3s in an order to help refine Tesla autopilot process. If they want to, customers can decline, but I'm guessing most won't. And finally, as you may or may not know, the electric vehicle news world is a pretty small one, and in the past, I've worked with quite a few other YouTubers and reporters, both in my time on this channel and also in previous gigs working for other companies. And while we may not always be on screen together, most of us get along pretty well behind the scenes. So when someone else is doing something awesome, well, we try and share. Which is why I'm telling you about Fully Charged Live, the first live exhibition from the lovely team over at Fully Charged YouTube channel. Due to take place on June 9th and 10th at Silverstone in the UK, it will be well worth going to if you can, and plenty of folks will be there, including, of course, the wonderful Robert Llewellyn and equally fun Johnny Smith. I've been lucky enough to work with them in the past, and I love them both, which is one of the reasons why I'm going to the UK to be part of it too. I don't have full details yet of my schedule, but if you want to meet the Fully Charged team, all the other awesome EV bloggers that are going to be there, and me as well, then you should certainly get yourself a ticket. I'll put the link for tickets below. As I'm assuming you're now racing to get tickets for that event, I'm going to bid you farewell for the week. As always, don't forget to like and comment. You can slap that notification bell to make sure you don't miss an episode. And if you fancy it, don't forget to subscribe to Transport Evolved Take 2 as well. There's more behind the scenes and informal videos there from myself and the TE crew. And of course, if you're up for helping us keep this network running, be sure to follow the links below to make your relevant donations. That's it. Have a great weekend. And as always, Keep evolving.